Well, good morning, church. It's great to be with you this morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Julie. I'm Julie Kia, and I'm part of the Central Manchester campus. Um, so good to have you with us um, today. And for those of you that might have um, heard my previous devotional, you may have remembered me talking about our faith miracle story of trying to buy a new house. I am actually recording this from our new home. So praise God um, for that miracle that really came through. Through. Well, today we're continuing with our series around faith and miracles, and I want to read um, a verse from a psalm with you, and it's Psalm 27, verse 13 to 14, and this is David talking, and he says, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Take heart and wait for the Lord. And along with some friends since January, I've been reading a chronological Bible reading plan and I'm currently reading 1 Samuel, where I'm following the faith life, adventure and trials of David. And the plan also dips into some Psalms as well. And in these Psalms, this is where we read about David's process and his response to what he's going through in his life at that time. And it's his journal for want of a better description. And I'm reminded as I read about David that he was God's chosen one. He was anointed and appointed to be king by God. And yet his story um, at times reads like an episode of a Netflix thriller where he's hunted by an unstable, insecure king and where he lives on a knife edge, not knowing where he's going to sleep from night to night as he dodges um, this crazy the enemy Saul. And, you know, this story about David is the life of a person who's called by God and someone who we're told was a man after God's heart. And yet his life is littered with trouble. And indeed, David said, himself in Psalm 34 verse 19, the righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all, echoing somewhat Jesus's words in John 16. And as modern day followers of Jesus, why is it, and I ask this question of myself as well today, why is it that we still expect life to be, or our life to be so different from that of our Bible heroes? And we can still find, and I've even found myself in the recent weeks asking, why does all this stuff happen to me? Why is this stuff going on in my life? And then I have to remind myself, as I'm going to encourage you to do today, that actually following Jesus doesn't inoculate us from trouble. And I'm sure that your life today, just like mine, as you're listening to this, wherever you are today, um, there's troubles of all kinds going on in your life and my life. And let's think for a moment about our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine who love Jesus and yet are experiencing horrendous um, things over there. And yet many of them God is using to be vehicles of his grace and his mercy and his help to other people whilst they're in these horrible um, situations. And as you and I systematically read through the life of David, over and over again, we can pick up on how he triumphed in the trials he was facing. We know that David didn't shy away from saying it like it was. He didn't pretend or deny the trouble that he was in. And many of the Psalms talk about his laments, his pain, his difficulty, and how he, he really did put that into words. But at the end of every Psalm of Lament, David did something which I'm continuing to encourage myself to do and I'm going to encourage you to do. And that is he spoke the truth to himself. He literally preached to himself. He grabbed himself by the scruff of the neck or as a friend of mine sometimes says, which I always laugh at took himself into a corner and gave himself a good talking to, had a word with himself. 
And today's scripture is just one of many examples that Dave, where David did that. He said, wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart and wait for the Lord. And when we're going through troubles, we do need to talk about it. We do need to tell God how we are feeling. That's the lament piece. But if that's where we stay, if we stay in a place of just going over and over and over our pain and our trouble, we will feel engulfed and overwhelmed by our feelings. And you know as well as I do, that can lead to feelings of despair and hopelessness. But this is where we have to grab ourselves by the scruff of the neck. And boy, is this hard because we tend as human beings to want to wallow in that stuff. But actually, the encouragement for today is to do what David did. And this is how we can actually have stories of miracles and breakthrough, because rather than wallowing, so staying too long in our pain, we actually preach to ourselves. We get hope, we get refueled and refilled with a sense of even in the midst of this, God is with me. God will bring breakthrough. God is going to do something miraculous. The circumstances may not change, certainly not immediately, but we change as we bring God into our difficulties. So today, my encouragement is grab yourself by the scruff of the neck along with me and preach to your soul the truth of God's word. Let's pray for a moment. Father, we thank you today that you are our hope. You are our strength in the midst of the struggles of life. You are the one we lean on and depend on. And today, Father, I pray for everyone who's listening to this um, devotional today, that you will bring the encouragement of your Holy Spirit to them along with me. And together, Father, we will see breakthrough, healing, transformation, transformation in our lives, in our families, in our job circumstances, in our church and community, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Have a great day, church, and I'll see you soon.